Welcome listeners to the uh, MS Power User either YouTube channel or podcasting channel, whichever you're listening to. This is a new thing that we're trying where when we do interviews for interesting topics with interesting people, or at least we hope so, uh, that we're going to be putting those on all of our social channels so that you can also listen to some things that might not make it into some of the articles uh, that we create. And this this intro might have been recorded after the fact, unfortunately. Uh, we recorded this on the, the hottest day of the year, all covered in sweat and gross stuff, and uh, unfortunately my audio did not survive uh, as well as we'd hoped. So I've spent the last few days trying to put everything together. Um, it is, you know, you can listen to it, but it's kind of robotic-y. That's, you know, when you don't plan everything out very well, that's just kind of the way that things go. So uh, this is an interview with Mike Rose. Uh, the head of uh, No More Robots, and they've been uh, supporting Game Pass for a... They've been really good in supporting Game Pass, uh, and so we thought that it would be a nice idea to interview Mike Rose, and then you can listen to his thoughts on uh, Game Pass, uh, other subscription services, uh, and he also talks about his thoughts on Halo, and you can hear my heart break. So um, I hope that you enjoy. Please subscribe and like and all that. And shout at us in the comments if you didn't like it. Anyway, enjoy. Would you uh, like to introduce yourself to the YouTube channel listeners? Yes, hello there. Uh, my name is Mike Rose. I run a publishing label called No More Robots. You may know us. Uh, for titles such as Descenders, or uh, I'm trying to think what uh, Xbox players would know the most. Nowhere Profit? Of course, Nowhere Profit. We just put Yes, Your Grace out on Xbox as well. Uh, we've got another very secret game coming out on Xbox very soon. Uh, secret projects. Secret projects. But uh, yeah, uh, and, I'm, and I'm very hot. I'm very warm. <laughs> very warm. I don't <laughs> very know indeed. what the weather is, like what the te actual temperature is, but I feel like a slip and slide. It's so gross. It's I'm so horrible right now. Moistened. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Uh, so uh, we invited you here today to talk about uh, Game Pass because uh, personally, uh, I see No More Robots as one of the biggest Game Pass supporters, or at least the most vocal about the benefits of what it brings. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of, lot of games on Game Pass now, uh, yeah. and. Uh, and I and I would probably guess that uh, Descenders. It's probably one of the biggest games on there that isn't AAA uh, yeah, I, at this point. I completely agree. Yeah, so, so yeah, you know, it's, it's obviously been quite good for us, really. <laughs> Do you think it helps in, uh, in Descenders' case that it's a very frequently updated game with a lot of new content coming? Yeah, I, I think that coupled with it being multiplayer, uh, the, the two things together uh have have really sort of i mean sales graphs right when you look at like sales graphs and player number graphs and stuff like that they always mm. start high uh, and then they start and then they drop and they drop and they drop uh descenders the the graph for descenders is unlike anything i've ever seen especially <laughs> after we went into game pass uh the every month now we sell more of the game and have more people joining through game pass than we did in each previous month. Like every single month we set new records with the game and it yeah. makes no sense and it should not do that. That's not how video games work. Uh, and you've said, um, you've said in the past that, I think this was two months ago, uh, Descenders sold five times the amount uh, by uh, June 2020 than it had sold uh, since it came into, onto Xbox consoles. And is, was that from when it started in game preview? It, that uh, yes, yes. So comparison between game preview, the start of game preview, and the start of game pass, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was there was a graph that I saw, which I'm pretty confident I could talk about. Uh, yeah. With uh, <laughs> the the Xbox actually were showing around uh, internally, and they showed me this graph, and basically uh, they were they were kind of showing you know the power of game pass and stuff, and using Descenders as one of the uh, examples. Yeah. And uh, the graph that they'd done, they had to alter the graph because the spike was so high uh, <laughs> from when we then went into Game Pass that it then just 
according to them, made it look like Descenders was selling nothing before the, before that <laughs> point. Like the the thing is that Descenders was selling great before Game Pass. You know, it was it was supporting uh, both No More Robots and Rage Squid. Great, we were all talking about the next game we're going to make together, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, and then and then this happened, and all of a sudden, it's like. It's not only Descenders isn't just supporting both studios now. It's like we're all like, this is going to support us for the rest of our lives. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's it's ludicrous. Uh, but yeah, they had to they had to alter this uh, internal Xbox graph, and and literally cut make the make the peak look smaller so it didn't make <laughs> us look sh- like worse before <laughs> before Game Pass. <laughs> Uh, with uh, like with the benefits that like Game Pass brings, like obviously there's a lot of um, there's a lot of marketing for every game that comes onto Game Pass. There's like Twitter posts, uh, YouTube videos, uh, dashboard ads, sometimes telling people uh, what's coming into Game Pass. Would you say that that is as a publisher that supports Game Pass quite heavily? Would you say that that's one of the uh, factors of bringing new games to Game Pass pretty much constantly with uh, your Xbox releases? Yeah. The, the the thing is, <laughs> I've kind of said this before, but um, you as a as a developer or a publisher, you you scramble for attention. You know, you yeah. you try to. There's a million games coming out every day, you know. And when you're putting a game out, and you know that two dozen other games came out that day, and then in the weeks to follow, when you know that your game is then just getting buried in this sea uh, mm-hmm. of other games. Uh, having ways to stand out from the crowd and actually having ways where people are visiting the Xbox dashboard and they are more likely to find your game simply because it's in an area of the dashboard or a list on the dashboard Mm. where there's less games, you're automatically uh, raising your chances of more people playing your game. So, so, you know, when when Descenders is appearing in uh, top download... Uh, lists on in in the Game Pass tab, yeah, that leads to more people downloading it, and then you know, of course, we know there's millions, tens of millions of people on Game Pass now, mm. uh, but but of course, that's not everyone. So for a game like ours, you get a bunch of of people playing on Game Pass, and yeah. then their friends all see them playing on Game Pass, and they're <laughs> like, well. I don't want to get Game Pass yet. I'm not super into subscriptions yet, but I do want to play this Descenders game with them, so I guess I'll have to buy it. Yeah. Uh, that's basically what has been happening with, for us, uh, and it's been very pleasant. And you uh, you don't just support uh, Game Pass console. You're also on Game Pass PC with Descenders and uh, no, uh, Nowhere Profit. Yes. Um, would, would you say that like the lack of... Like, is there a, a huge disparity between the numbers on Game Pass PC and the numbers on uh, Game Pass console? You know, there there was when it first started, as you'd expect from a yeah. new service. That there was, we we put it into when we put it into to Game Pass uh, for PC. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, it was I can't remember what the numbers were, but it was a it was a high percentage were just coming from Xbox. Hmm. Uh, but I think especially. Um, as Ultimate has come in, and more people now just have access to to Game Pass on PC yeah. uh, as part of just having Game Pass. Um, I think a lot more people. I, I have seen way more people kind of getting into Game Pass for PC, realizing. Uh, I think a big problem with people on PC is that they hate having a million different, you know, of these programs that they have to run to, yeah. to play games. They've already got Steam. They don't bloody want another one. They, you know, they might have Riot for Valorant, or they might have Blizzard, for, and 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 they just they don't want another one. But mm. eventually, when someone sees, well, hang on a minute, you know, I've already got Game Pass. I could just <laughs> download this Game Pass from PC thing, and then I'd have hundreds of games, free games to play. I think it's chipping away at people slowly, and we have definitely, especially in the last few months, we have seen. Uh, our our player numbers go up on on PC, um, so it's definitely been worth it for us to to be on there. Yeah, I feel like it's a, that that kind of uh, like thought process on PC is especially weird for people who have Windows 10, considering that it's already on 
your computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you know what it's like, though? People, you know, I've, I, I'd say even myself, people can be very suspicious of Windows. You know, when Windows yes. is trying to install things for them. And, and every time there's an update, it's like, hey there, we've added new things to your task. But I, I think a big issue is it feels a little bit like that, right? It feels mm. a little bit like, hang on a minute, are you trying to put your bloody Xbox on my PC? Or uh, like when, uh, when they were just shoving Candy Crush on every Windows 10 PC? Yeah, it's stuff like that. Pe- people, people don't like stuff being shoved on them. But, but I, do, I do think uh, that, yeah, it is going that way. And I, I don't know how quickly the transition is going to be. I, you know, I know, um, I know it's, it's still in beta at the moment. So I imagine when it's coming out of beta, then uh, there'll be, well, it's Microsoft, isn't it? So I imagine they'll be doing a massive push for it. Um, yeah, they uh, they got a new Microsoft Store on the store. Have yeah, you seen this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely, but but yeah, I I I imagine uh, as they as they whenever it is they're coming out of beta, I imagine as that's happening, uh, they'll they'll throw a bunch of money behind it, you know, because that's kind of what they do. And and at that point, you'd imagine that PC Game Pass numbers are going to accelerate a bit. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm there's a lot of PC gamers compared to how many Xbox One gamers there are. So yeah, exactly. You, you know, though, like, this is, I mean, this is getting more now into Microsoft's game plan, really. But yeah. I think, if anything, what you've just said there kind of hits the nail on the head of what what Microsoft are even doing. You know, like... Oh, yeah. The, the fact of the matter is that, of course, next gen is important. And, of course, Game Pass on next gen is important, etc. Mm-hmm. Of course it is. But... The the thing is that, it, as far you know, as far as I can tell, Microsoft have their eye on a much larger ball here. They they are thinking, you know, with with PC Game Pass, with X Cloud, etc. Yeah. It seems to me that they don't just want to have, you know, gamers, console gamers. That's mm-hmm. that's not what they want anymore. They want everyone, <laughs> you know. And yeah, and and you know what? I'm I'm incredibly interested to see how it goes because the truth is. There's, there's a lot of people out there who would play games, but just not on a console. Hmm. Um, so for me personally, and you know, if, you know, Descenders and all our other games are getting dragged along with this, you know, we're, we're, kind, of, we're, we're kind of going on xCloud. I think maybe yeah. we're on the beta for xCloud. I'm, I'm actually I f- not sure. I feel like you were on xCloud when I played it a few months ago. Yeah, we, we yeah, I, th- I think we are either on xCloud or we're going to be, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's one of the two. But, um, but yeah, with, with that and with PC Game Pass and, and with next gen stuff, it, it really does feel a lot like uh, it is opening the door to way more people being able to play our games, which obviously for me is incredibly interesting, really. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually one of the things uh, I wanted to talk about. Like Microsoft's my, Microsoft's game plan. Like people say, oh, oh Game Pass is the product, or um, or mm. Series X is the product, or Xbox All Access is the product. And I think I think like the think uh, the thought process behind that is like Xbox is the the product. It's the name Xbox. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like their commitment to backwards compatibility and XCloud with all of these like game pass games like every game in game pass uh, we like all of them pretty much should be carrying over and as a like as a as a publisher of games on xbox one that technically doesn't have to do anything for their games to be on the launch day of a new next gen console that mm. will have well, it will have like a two weeks of game pass chucked in in the box uh is that like? Uh, do you see that as a as a positive thing for more growth? Oh, of, of course, yeah. I, I mean, you know, it, it's difficult currently just because we can't see in action yet. You know, what I mean, like there is currently it's it's a lot of um, this is how it's going to roughly work, and and so for us, I'm a little bit like it sounds exciting. I'm going to wait and see a little bit. Mm. Uh, you know, we're we're currently like putting. Uh, putting stuff on next gen natively as well uh so so uh you know cover all bases and all that uh but uh but, but certainly yeah um if it's if it's just the case that you know on on day one a a, a, a series x player can uh can just grab descenders on on game pass then you know obviously i'm gonna be pretty down with that really <laughs> 
sounds good to me. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, neg- I, I, I don't know if it's a negative uh, point of Game Pass is that people do eventually after they've had that honeymoon period with the service, they do end up flicking through it like the library on Netflix um, and people saying, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy this game because it's on game pass. Despite a lot of people, obviously from like the numbers that have been released, a lot of people do buy games that they've played on game pass. I was yeah. wondering how it like feels uh, for you as a publisher of seeing people going, Oh, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy this game because it's on this subscription service. Yeah. I mean, Quite frankly, you know, if people are saying that, they weren't going to buy the game anyway. You know, they it's it's not they're not people. And you know, if anything, it's just nice that uh, they got to try the game anyway. There, yeah. There's a lot of people, especially with Ascenders, who tried Ascenders, and they then afterwards say, "I love this game," but there is no way I would have ever tried this game. And yeah. we completely get that. It's a mountain bike game. Like you, you're either you go on the store and you either are like, wow, this is cool. It's like with me, like I would quite frankly never spend money on a farming simulator game or something like that, you know, where you're just mm. driving around plowing fields. But if I try one of these, I've got one of those downloaded on, on Game Pass. I haven't tried it yet. But <laughs> if I play that and I'm like, oh, hell yeah, this is actually kind of interesting. I might then in future actually check out you know future uh, games from that person it's mm. it's this kind of thing where uh we are getting from game pass a lot of exposure from you know from from all kinds of people beforehand we had very specific people playing descenders yeah and that was great but now we've got those very specific type of people who want a mountain bike game of all things and now all of these other more casual players, especially kids, uh, mm. who who would have never uh, paid money for Descenders, and now either play it religiously or even bought the game, or even bought the game on another platform because they tried it on Xbox, but they prefer PC. I uh, never never thought that. <laughs> that happens. That happens all of the time, so especially. When, when... Uh, Sorry, when, go ahead. when you were uh, released on Game Pass, did you see a spike in Steam uh, customers? hundred percent, hundred percent. Steam sales since we went into Game Pass have been ridiculous. <laughs> a, a a big a big reason here yeah. is because the Steam version actually has a feature that the Xbox version doesn't. Because unfortunately, mm-hmm. we just can't do it on Xbox, and that's modding. Oh, the workshop. Uh, yeah. yeah. So so the the problem is that. Uh, we don't have a level editor in Descenders. Mm. People just boot Unity up and yeah. make levels in Unity and then upload them to the PC version of Descenders. And then we have a store where people can download uh, these these levels. We can't do that on Xbox because on Xbox you have to have the you have to have a level a level editor essentially within the Xbox game, and p- people actually have to make the levels through the xbox version do they make uh, uh do they make like exceptions for for some games and, and not for you because i know fallout 4 and skyrim and uh the, i think even the farming simulator one of them has mods on xbox consoles i i think the way that they've done it, it i'd have to go back to this conversation again because this was this was months ago we we spent literally months trying to put modding <laughs> into the xbox version and we finally got to this point where it was just like well no we can't do this it's not possible (laughs) so now what we've started doing is we've just started taking the highest rated mods on pc and putting them into the xbox version as bike parks Uh, i think that's that's a fantastic way of going around it yeah it works it it works quite well one of the big problems is that obviously the average person who just makes a bike park in unity Mm. Uh, does not really optimize it. So, <laughs> so a lot of them we try to run on Xbox, and we're like, "Yeah, this is running at ten frames a second. This isn't going to happen." <laughs> uh, and we and we have had to uh, help a couple of devs with like optimize a, a couple of, of map makers with mm. optimizing their maps so it can go in the Xbox version. Uh, so it's, it's a fair amount of work. <laughs> I'll be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, but yeah, we've we've got so many players on Xbox. Uh, we do we do try to. Uh, make sure that xbox plays are as, as getting as as much as of the pc version as possible really uh when it comes to uh like when it when it comes to like 
<laughs> console war bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, the, the, uh, Descenders is coming to PlayStation 4 next week. Yeah, uh, two weeks, two weeks, yeah. Two weeks' time. Uh, yeah. I, I got the email. <laughs> yes, yes, and, um, it's very exciting. Um, it's, you know, it, I've, we've loved having it on Xbox, and I think that one of the reasons it's done so well on Xbox is because it's an Xbox game. I think it's yeah. like, I think Xbox in general is is more of a sort of sports game platform uh, mm. than, than PlayStation. And Xbox uh, you know, themselves have, they do treat it like it's their game. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I'm happy for them to continue to do so, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but I'm, I'm very interested to see, I just love numbers. I just yeah. really love numbers and seeing how things do. And so I am fascinated to see how the game does on PlayStation uh, compared to, to Xbox. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's going to continue to do better on Xbox uh, because, as I say, I think it's more of an Xbox game than a PlayStation game. Uh, so I think mm. I think I'll still continue to be happy with Microsoft treating it like it's a <laughs> uh, it's an Xbox game, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I said this to a colleague of mine uh, a couple of days ago that the senders is uh, is Xbox's full guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It's it's uh, maybe well, not maybe, definitely a slower burner than full guys. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 definitely been an interesting last couple of years, you know, when we launched on Xbox, I, mm-hmm. I think uh, at, the, at the very beginning, uh, we, we sold fine, but it, you know, it wasn't like an explosion or anything. I think it was like, you know, Xbox kind of saw the launch and they were like, oh yeah, well done. That was, that was a good launch. Well, yeah, good, good, good numbers. <laughs> and then, you know, like a year later, then it's like, all right, the numbers are starting to go up. This is strange. And now at this point, uh, it's, you know, it's constantly in the, in the top downloaded on Game Pass. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's been so weird. It's is been it, so weird. Is it weird to you how big Descenders is? Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. We're, when, when I was originally talking with the developers Rage Squid, yeah. uh, we always said in the first place, uh, I, I, I always said to them, I reckon that this game could end up being massive Mm. partially because it's such a a very specific niche it's so just like anybody could download a mountain bike game everyone knows what riding a bike is everyone understands you pick up the controller and you get it you hold a button down and the bike goes forward like (laughs) you can literally give it to a child you can give it to an older person who doesn't play games Everybody understands you hold the button to go and you move left and right and the bike moves left and right. And I, I, I think in the end, that has genuinely been just the core of why it has slow burned its way over the last two, couple of years or into all of a sudden it's massive and tons of people are playing it every day. Uh, it's it, the depth of the game really helps as well. You know, you yeah. you can you can casual play it or you can hardcore play it. You know, you've got yeah. There are people who, who are there are people who look like they do nothing else, but yes, but show me up. <laughs> yes, oh, yes. There's there's we ha- we have like a, a Discord now with tens of thousands of people in it, and uh, they they all they do every day is just sit and stream to each other. They stream the daily challenge and the game to each other. And like, just for hours, all just fight over the daily challenge every day. And, <laughs> and you know, and they're, and they're all making mods and all helping each other make new worlds for the game, etc. But mm. it's one of the reasons why we keep updating it as well. Because people we just can't help ourselves. If we've got all of these players asking for stuff, like right now, uh, the big update that's coming soon, which is one of the biggest we've ever done for it, is that is... on the launch of the PS4 version? Or is no, that... it's not. On, no, it's not on the launch of PS4 version. To be honest, we were hoping to do that, but to be honest, uh, it was way too much work. Like the update started to balloon, uh, oh. so uh, we're kind of holding it back uh, a, a little while longer. But this next update is going to have like tons of like customization options in it. It's going to have new bikes in it. People have been screaming at us for different like frames for their bikes. <laughs> We're all with different handling, and there's going to be this crazy new map uh, that's, uh, that the that the lead uh, artist has been making, which is kind of like like a little like favela town. 
I say little, okay. it's massive. Uh, <laughs> and there's there's new tricks going in, and there's there's just like new of everything going into the game in this next update um, that has ballooned and ballooned. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's just. I think because of the surprise of, of how Descenders has ended up doing, it's just completely changed all of our plans. Rage Squid now, they just they just make Descenders now. <laughs> you know, they were like, <laughs> wondering what about what to make next. They just do Descenders now because they love it so much. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a ride. <laughs> yeah, we've seen like we've seen like major triple A games like uh uh like like Destiny and uh like Battlefield Five like try and do this. Uh, live service thing and like the original Destiny was supposed to be like a ten, a ten year thing that never really uh, you know obviously they had a sequel and yeah. do you think that uh, with Game Pass as a, as a service like constantly push, pushing your game to, towards new new customers and new fans that it will allow you to like create games as a service as an indie developer that, that will actually be able to go on for like save like these massive like decade long period oh, yeah definitely like I, I think um it's funny obviously it's not game pass but i think you're kind of seeing it with four guys uh, yeah. on, on ps plus like it's yeah, obviously it's on playstation but it's kind of the same deal uh, mm. they're obviously going to go on forever now that game will never die i, I can <laughs> tell you that straight away right now four guys will never ever die I, to be honest, it's crazy more people are talking about that game. It's obviously a conversation for another time, but but that is, Fall Guys is the biggest video game launch that has ever happened in the history of video games. Like, it's bigger than any AAA launch or anything. Like, Would you, you say it's bigger than Rocket League? Because that also had the same kind oh, of... 100%. Oh, yeah, because it's not as... It's 100%. Not... It's not as Rocket like League hardcore ma- as Rocket League, so no, I guess it's a Rocket lot. League was massive, don't get me wrong, but, but what Fall Guys has done is atrocious like it's actual <laughs> i cannot believe the numbers if you look like they're nearly selling as much as like the last of us sold Oof. The, the last of us was made in nearly a decade and probably <laughs> cost hundreds of millions of dollars i don't know how much fall guys cost but i'm gonna imagine it's not hundreds of millions of dollars uh, never truly guys, know <laughs> no but th- those guys are going to be swimming in cash for the rest of their days <laughs> it's, it's a treasure but anyway um yeah it, it's it's i think uh i think for for descenders obviously is is not on that level but uh i i, I think that we always kind of told ourselves from the very beginning was that uh like especially when we're going to game pass as well i know a lot of people go into game pass yeah. And they have, uh, you know, sort of in-app purchases and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the devs were always very much against that. Uh, hence why why Descenders doesn't. Uh, and so now it's like getting to the point where uh, we've literally got people asking us to put in-app purchases in the game. Like, <laughs> all the time people are telling us, like, if you put this and this and this in the game, I would pay money for it. If you put a battle pass in the game, I'd pay money for it. And it's it, it, like, what do you do with that? You know, like, what, do you, what yeah. do you do when people are literally asking for these things? It has genuinely made us start to have conversations about like, well, what would a battle pass, what would a Descenders battle pass look like? What would we have to, what would we have to give in this game that would be enough value that, you know, people would, would be like, holy shit, yeah, I'm going to buy this. You'd have to give um, everyone those pirate flags you gave to the pirate. Oh, the pirate flags. Yeah. That would be good, but no, it, it it does it opens doors. As I think is the point I'm trying to make. You know, it it, yeah. it 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 puts us in the position where we're like genuinely in a in a place where we can say, "Is this a thing we should be looking into now?" Mm. Um, which we never would have believed a couple of years ago, really. Yeah, like I, I, obviously, like a lot of gamers are so like anti microtransaction and anti uh, like battle pass, but like if people. Are, literally asking for it like that yeah. kind of puts you in a, <laughs> in a weird position where it's like do we have to do <laughs> like should yeah. we be doing this yeah i i i like the idea of um battle pass stuff where you know it's uh i i i am actually kind of weirdly into battle passes i think they're kind of mm. cool because i like the way that they don't disrupt the game in any way yeah. you know you you play the game and if you don't have the battle pass don't matter. You just you're just still playing the game. I've been playing Valorant mm. for for months now, and I love it. 
Uh, and you know what? After after dozens and dozens of, hour, of hours, I bought a battle pass because it yeah. was like seven pounds or something. And I was like, yeah, I probably I played seven pounds of game at this point. <laughs> so, I did the I did the same thing with Fortnite like a couple of years ago, and like yeah. you could earn another battle pass by playing. Yes, through exactly. The Exactly, yeah. I bought the first Apex Legends Battle Pass, and now I've not bought another Battle Pass <laughs> since then. Yeah. Oh, the so, weirdest so... one is the, the Halo one, where it's a Battle Pass, but you don't have to pay for anything, and also the items never leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's this... Uh, I've always been kind of anti, anti-in-app purchase, but yeah. uh, I feel like with Battle Passes, we're finally starting, get, starting to get to a place where I feel more comfortable. Mm. Like it, it feels like it's not, it's not disrupting people who don't get the battle pass, basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And uh, I, I guess that leads on to the the next uh, hastily stri- scribbled down note I've got on here. Games as a service, like the um, like these games that go on for years and years with events and microtransactions and battle pass. Like, yeah. how do you feel about that on the business, like the business half of you, and just like the normal gamer half of you? And how does uh, Xbox Game Pass like change your approach with that? Oh, I, I I love that kind of thing. I I know it's it's kind of nerdy, but I I I feel like it's it's actually really cool seeing uh, seeing studios be able to do that. You know, mm. be able to be able to. It it kind of makes sense, right? Like that you spend, especially for AAA, they spend so many years making a game. Yeah. And then what? After like four or five years, they drop the game, and then it's like, well, then we just move on. Mm. And now you've got these situations where, like, like with Destiny, they they can continue to um, continue to support. And uh, what's the what's the other game called? Uh, the uh, Destiny game that isn't Destiny. Uh, Warframe. Uh, Warframe. Warframe. Oh, I love Warframe. Warframe. Warframe's really interesting because obviously it's it's not an indie studio by any means, but yeah. it's 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 a smaller studio than than AAA, yeah. and that for them, I feel like in a weird way, like what's happened with them is kind of in a similar vein to what happened with Descenders. You know, I, mm-hmm. I feel like uh, Warframe came out, some people kind of paid attention. It was kind of interesting, uh, and. Then just gradually over time, it's built and built and built. And now I, I hear about that game loads. Uh, I got and, an and advert it, for it the other day. Yeah, it's 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 one of those situations where you know so many people can play it. Obviously, it helps that it's free, mm. uh, but but so many people can play it uh, and just kind of check it out and try it. That it just builds and builds and builds like that. Um, yeah, it's it's really cool. I I. I really like these kind of things and I'm starting to check more and more of these kind of games out like that uh, Hyperscape, I guess, came out uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago. The Ubisoft um, one. Yeah, yeah. and I uh, don't, know, don't know what to think of it yet, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's intriguing to me at least. You know, I, I, like, I like this model and it is intriguing enough that I gave it a download. As a, as a publisher, how often do you see yourself uh, just like monitoring how other games do? <laughs> Oh, just all the time. That's just my my job is constantly keep keep check on every single other publisher and <laughs> make sure make sure we're doing better than them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I do I compare what we're doing a lot, especially I I think because uh, we are kind of strange. Uh, yeah. We we don't I, I I think we don't run no more robots in a way that most of the publishers do we uh we rely heavily on not spending money (laughs) you know like not doing paid adverts and not paying streamers and youtubers to play our games and uh and and we don't have you know crazy deals going on at the table Mm. uh we we just sort of try to put out great games and then i try to scream a lot (laughs) <laughs> and then the games work keep, seem to sell that way. Hmm. Um, so uh, and, it, and, it, and it works for us, I think, just because uh, we end up, yeah, we end up selling decently, and it does mean that because we didn't spend any money, uh, the the developer of the game is just immediately making a bunch of money. I guess the uh, the boost of of Game Pass as well also got a lot of press interested in Descenders. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. And yeah. uh, you know, and we've just gone in with with nowhere profit now, and obviously, you know, it was only what a couple of weeks ago that went in, so it's still a bit too soon to tell. 
Yeah. Uh, but that's getting, lo- you know, the number of people who have played Nowhere Profit now has like more than doubled, you know, since, <laughs> since we launched, uh, launched on, on Steam last year. Um, thanks to thanks to Game Pass. So you know, for the for the dev, mm. uh, you know, he 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 all of a sudden a year later has a ton of new people playing his game, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, yeah, so I've yeah, seen it's nice. like when it comes to like the future of Game Pass, which is like obviously there's like the X Cloud component, and anyone will be able to like th- there's th- there's this thought of how consoles back in the new consoles when they launched in 2013 they were all about making everyone a, like a YouTuber so that, you know, games can be more popular. And now when it comes to xCloud, really anyone can be a YouTuber because anyone has, everyone has a phone and everyone can record that game like on their phone. Pretty much wherever they are, they could take a clip of the, like, the cool moment that they did playing the game through streaming. Do you see that as another like, angle of how Game Pass is going to make games even more popular? Yeah, I, it definitely can do uh, with um, with our game, especially with Descenders. Like YouTuber stuff has has been massive. Uh, we we get a lot of um, we get a lot of quite major YouTubers just constantly playing the game, and it mm. definitely uh, it definitely causes a lot of younger people to download the game on Game Pass. Yeah, uh, I think we get I think we get a lot of kids playing it uh for, thanks to you know i guess there's a lot of big youtubers who have like a kid fan base oh uh, all of them and so they <laughs> a lot of them yeah and so uh and so yeah we we do get a lot of kids playing it that way and uh and you know obviously for us I'm, it's not it's not that i'm thinking this now but you know all of these people when when you know we have whatever the next game is out yeah. uh you you'd hope uh that that's going to be exciting to those people, you know, that we've got, there's a new game out by, by the Descenders people. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly, uh, YouTube and YouTube and streaming stuff is certainly kind of, uh, helping to push Descenders along. Yeah. And like when it comes to like, like, uh, you've said like numerous times about how like the next game from the Descenders people and like under the yeah. normal robots brand, I don't think there's a single game that's like, another game no uh no and, but, that, and that's on purpose basically yeah. but game that's pass it. like game Sorry, pass guys. doesn't mean that there has to be a correlation between what developers and publishers put out at all no no and and uh you know when when i was first starting no more robots i kept getting asked like oh what's your what's your theme gonna be you know <laughs> what are you you know devolvers devolvers gritty and and pixel art and all this kind of stuff I don't. I think, I, if anything, I've proven that it's, this it doesn't have to be a theme. Every single mm. one of our games is is bloody weird in some different way. Maybe <laughs> that's the theme. Uh, but uh, no, it's it's for us on you know on on Game Pass uh, putting the games we're putting on there. Mm. Uh, especially, I think you'll see. Uh, <laughs> I think you'll I think you'll see in. It, in the next in the next couple of weeks, especially, I think you'll Uh-oh. see that uh, <laughs> I think you'll see that um, that yeah, we we definitely do not have uh, a pattern of what the kind of games that come to <laughs> to Game Pass are. <laughs> would you would you say that like having th- this subscription service that um, like gets players to just even just like throw a chance onto your game would you say that as a publisher allows you to have more creativity in the games that you choose to publish yeah i mean obviously a tricky component in this is that you've got to get xbox to want to put it on game pass in the first place so if it's (laughs) too bloody mental then maybe they'll say no you know i i can't imagine for example uh you know we've we've got a we've got a anti-brexit game uh, that one's not, not on tonight. Xbox, is it? It's not on Xbox, no. Yeah, and I, and, and part of it. the reason, part of the reason it's not on Xbox is because, quite frankly, I am fairly confident uh, that they would never put that on Game Pass. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, because that kind of thing's tricky, right? That's like you could argue that that's them taking a political stance. Yeah. Uh, so, well, so that's so Xbox that's a, anti anti Brexit. The headlines exactly. it would make. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's the kind of thing. That's that's one thing that springs to mind for me. And 
you know, we definitely plan to make more political games uh, mm. in, in the future, which, of course, when I'm doing that, uh, I have to know in my mind, well, this ain't going on Game Pass, <laughs> uh, which, you know, is, is a big deal. Uh, you know, if, if I'm already just with the concept of a game, striking uh, Game Pass off the, uh, off, or, any, or any subscription model, really, mm. uh, off the potentials. Um, but but yeah, I mean, otherwise, I think I think you're already seeing. You know, there's there's plenty of weird games on Game Pass uh, and games that I've Carry tried on. personally. Carry on launched in Game Pass. That's yeah. a weird game. Great. Game, yeah. Weird game. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and and it's those kind of things. Like that for those kind of games, it's perfect. Mm. Uh, and so yeah, I think I think for for the kind of games we make as well right now, I think Game Pass is kind of perfect as well. Really. Yeah, and we've already. Like I would say that Game Pass isn't like homogenous like at all. It's so full of completely different games. But we've seen companies like like Apple with their Apple Arcade subscription, they've cancelled contracts with developers because they want to make yeah. more, uh homogenous like uh, yeah. games that bring in people all the time with like daily yeah. challenges and stuff. And uh, obviously, Descenders has daily challenges and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah. like nowhere I from. I believe Nowhere, Nowhere Profit doesn't have. Daily it does have. It does have it daily does. challenge in in Nowhere Profit. Actually, I mean, it, it's. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't argue it was uh, the big uh, the big pull of the game. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, yeah. I mean, the the whole Apple thing was was a bit gross. Truth be told, uh, I, I remember hearing about it, and I and I knew like some of the people who got their stuff cancelled, and hmm. and I think years ago when i was uh when i was kind of worrying out loud about the stuff about subscription models and stuff this is the kind of thing i was worrying about uh you know like like for me uh for me game pass has not quelled my fears about subscription models Mm -hmm. not through what it is uh i i think what microsoft is doing with game pass is fantastic we keep putting our games in it so i and i wouldn't if i didn't think that my my fear is that uh more people are now going to do it because they've seen how well game pass is done of course they are because that's how our industry works everyone just copies everyone else uh and my fear is that the other ones will not be as good Mm. and will become big and will give developers crappy deals and then in three, four, five years' time, we will be in a situation where, you know, we've got the we've got the Netflix and the Amazon and the uh, and the Hulu of uh, of video games now, but they're all just sort of giving developers crappy deals because they've got a bunch of games now, and they don't really need you as much as you need them. Uh, obviously I'd love it if this didn't happen and I'd love it if just a bunch of subscription models came out that were all as good as Game Pass but uh, I know how human beings work yeah we've uh, seen we've seen developers saying like Game Pass is the first subscription service for games that's actually fair to developers and uh, obviously they haven't gone out and said which ones aren't fair for developers but there's not that many of them so <laughs> there's like well, this- the, the vast majority that I've been approached by yeah. are not paid up front basically yeah, it's like uh, spotify yes kind of it's the spotify model and i will categorically i will pledge it now i will never put any of our games on one of those yeah they can piss off quite frankly uh i no i'm just not doing that i if you if you want to pay us for our game up front like you bloody should do to have our game for free on your subscription service so that people want to give you money for your subscription service. Yeah. I think especially that's a pretty that's getting, a pretty fair deal really. <laughs> especially know? if they're still getting the thirty percent from from those who decide they want to buy the game as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 all it's all very gross. I I, I mean we we have uh we have signed a deal for a future game on to another subscription service which isn't game pass 
uh, and that was a nice deal. So there's definitely all the companies who are also doing nice subscription service deals. Hmm. Uh, so so it's not just like it's game. It's Microsoft who have, who are doing it nicely, and that's it. Yeah. Um, so there is hope. There is hope that this is going to continue to happen. For me, I'm still in the. I think this might end badly phases. Yeah. Uh, but maybe in a few years, I'll have changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> maybe everything will be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, so when it when it comes to obviously there are two other main console platforms. So that's Nintendo and there's uh, there's PlayStation. Do that you one, feel yeah. like either of these are go- either of these platforms? Not that they have to evolve so that they have their own version of game pass but that they should evolve to have their own version of game pass uh i uh, nintendo won't nintendo no, won't. Nintendo, won't. <laughs> nintendo is nintendo like they, unless it's nes games nintendo nintendo don't care this is not being horrible about nintendo this is just how nintendo are nintendo do not care yeah. what any of us are saying <laughs> you know they they, <laughs> they are headquartered very very far away and they do not care what we're saying. And all they see is the numbers going up. Yeah. So uh, they will continue to be happy with the numbers going up. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> now, now, PlayStation, PlayStation uh, may have to. PlayStation may have to react to mm. uh, what Microsoft are doing uh, this time. Th- the problem, of course, is that uh, if they do react, they are very far behind. Mm. Uh, they they already uh, they w- they would have to do a lot of work to catch up basically and and probably spend a lot of money. It's doable because they're PlayStation and they've got a lot of money. They have uh, many monies, many monies. But but part of me, and again, I have no inside knowledge, so uh, this is complete speculation. Part mm. of me feels like PlayStation are probably just like we don't need to do that. We're PlayStation. <laughs> We're massive. PS5 is going to sell tons. Yeah. I feel like PlayStation are just going to double down on what PS4 did yeah. and just do PS4 again. That's what I think they're going to do. Whereas, as I said earlier, I think Microsoft, partially because, let's be honest here, they kind of you know didn't do as well as PlayStation this generation. Mm. So they've had to pivot and they've had to actually be like, right, what are we doing better this time? Yeah. Uh, I, I think Microsoft... Are, that has led Microsoft to look at the bigger picture, uh, and 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 you know, and now we see whether the bigger picture works. Now we see whether this this combo of getting Xbox and Game Pass onto as many devices as possible, and not just focusing on next gen. Now we see if this works. Obviously, it- obviously, I hope it does because because <laughs> I got games on there. Uh, yeah. But we'll see, I guess. When it comes to like obviously console sales is not Microsoft's focus. They've already gone out and said that they, they don't really care if people don't buy an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S. So, uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously they do. Obviously yeah. they, they, they want they, everyone to have one. Yes, they would but, look. If they sold a ton, they'd be like, see what we did. But <laughs> but but the, the, the truth is that I, and again, no inside knowledge, I would imagine that the meetings that they have at Xbox right now are PlayStation 5 is going to sell lots. It is going to sell a lot, a lot. Like PlayStation mm-hmm. at this point are in a very strong position where they have so many kind of people following them, yeah. so many PlayStation sheep that, that they will sell a ton of PS5s, whether the PS5 is good or not. Mm. Uh, but that I think that is why it is clever what Microsoft are doing. They are in a way they're stepping out of the ring and they're just like they're they're literally like going we we're not even fighting playstation this time yeah they're on the bench on their phone just texting away yeah they're (laughs) just they're just getting all their mates and 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 they're all gonna just have a little party together i i i I think that is the way that they're going you know and i and it's why stuff like you know this this like halo delay and stuff Hmm. doesn't real massively concern me because i don't think it was about you know trying to work out ways to make uh you know make this arbitrary at this point next gen launch you know matter more yeah it's about continuously making game pass bigger 
and mm. X Cloud bigger, etc. And so whenever Halo comes out, uh, that will increase Game Pass yeah. subscriptions. Of course it will. The the day that comes out, tons of people are gonna get a, a, a Game Pass subscription. I'm still buying Halo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I shouldn't I should not say this uh, because I'll be in trouble. But uh, I have just never played Halo. Oh, that's okay. I I, I tried. I tried. I got. I, I downloaded the anniversary thing. Mm. Uh, you know, the anniversary version on Game Pass, and I started playing through Halo One. But it's just this guy is quite old now. You know, oh, like, I'm sure it was great. This. I'm sure it was great at the time, but it feels bloody old now. And, and I was just like. Uh, and then I can't. Then I, my brain's like, "Well, I can't go and just play later Halos." You, <laughs> you can. Know, like, I don't think, well, the story won't make sense. That's you know, not like... true. The wiki entries are very small. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll read. I'll read through all the wiki first, and then I'll start at Halo Reach. <laughs> see what. Oh. See what happens. <laughs> At least it's not as old as Goldeneye. Yeah. I'd say yeah. that's pretty much unplayable now. So. Yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would still love to see this rumoured Perfect Dark. Um, I would love to see, see that appear. Uh, I think we'll I'm, see it. I'm definitely a Perfect Dark fan. Perfect um, Dark was so much better than Goldeneye. It was. It really was. Goldeneye really fans was. can fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> Perfect Dark Zero, not so fantastic, but, yeah. um, you know, hopefully our next one will be. Let's hope so. I mean, if the initiative have, like, a bad first game, that's not going to go down very well. No, it's not. Yeah. So it's not. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like Microsoft's going to chuck as much money at that as possible. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what they're doing with Halo right now. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Halo is this is a new direction for Halo and Forza is definitely going the same way because they've called it Forza Motorsport. I yeah. like both of these games are platforms because they want you to stay subscribed. And I mean, PlayStation fans will have my nut for this, but like Forza Motorsport has been better than Gran Turismo for quite a long time. <laughs> Oh yeah, so. I, I don't play many car games, and even even I know that. <laughs> you know, I play, <laughs> yeah. I play, I play both sides, and and yeah, it definitely is. Although I found, obviously... it, I found it very funny when Forza Seven came out, and everyone was like, "This game has so many loot boxes," and you know, there was a particular online voice that was like grilling them for it, and they they took them out. But Forza Seven, you didn't pay for loot boxes; <laughs> mm, <laughs> they weren't yeah. a paid thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. I I th- I think um, something I am fascinated by yeah. is uh, how obviously the the big focus for PS4 was that PlayStation have all of these crazy exclusives. Like that's the thing that you think about when you think of PS4. Just like yeah, but that wasn't a how thing many until, like halfway through because they no uh, and that uh, but, but but that's the thing like. You saw then, you saw Microsoft kind of realizing this and yeah. all of a sudden going ape shit on buying studios. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, I don't even know how it did. I think they bought like a dozen or something. And uh, and now, you know, and that, that was in like the last few years. And obviously games take a while to make. So They're a lot of those games. More. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So, but this is the thing, like long term, it might actually be in the next, you know, within the next sort of, five or six years Microsoft may actually you know replicate what PlayStation 4 has been doing this generation yeah uh, all of those exclusives on Game Pass yeah yeah uh, that's the thing that's the thing like what what, what you, you know like what more could you want really getting all of these games basically for free you know if you were gonna have Game Pass anyway yeah. Uh, then uh, it's 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 bizarre. It's bizarre. It really is. I I think it's yeah. I don't know if they're ever going to change their mind on that. You know, I don't know if they're ever going to be like, oh, maybe we should stop giving away these games, which could potentially make billions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, but you know, for now at least. Well, uh, I mean, I see it as the the way that uh, like Spotify does it. It's like people come on for your deals, and then the like. If it's 10 million people sign up because of this deal and then half of them forget 
the next month that they didn't cancel their subscription. Oh, that's 100%. a lot of money. <laughs> that is a, that is a million percent <laughs> like how these things work. Of course, you know yeah. it is a bit it is a bit scummy, but yeah, like I've. I've 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 got PS Plus running right now, and I don't even think I ever use it. And I'm just paying for it every month for for like a, a short while. I wasn't even around, so I couldn't even be using Game Pass. Mm. And I just kind of let Game Pass go for a few months. I accidentally paid spent, for it. I accidentally paid fifty pound subscription for LinkedIn. What? Yeah, that's, I got my seven wow, day. I got my seven day LinkedIn gold thing, so I could message developers right. <laughs> for interviews. Yeah. Forgot yeah. to gave Microsoft fifty quid because I forgot to take it off. Yeah, that's how I started using Amazon Prime. I I got <laughs> like the free month of Amazon Prime or whatever you get. I forgot to cancel it. It, it they they charged me for a year. Then yeah. I started using Amazon Prime. I was like, oh, parcels coming next day. Oh, I know. <laughs> this is exciting. It's and now I'm good. like, I can't I can't do without it anymore. <laughs> that's how you. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Oh yeah, but Amazon Prime Video is a complete mess. There's like Fortnite the movie on there. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is. They do get some. They do get some weird stuff on on Prime uh, Prime Video though. That I'm uh, I'm watching quite a few things at the moment actually. Yeah, me too. There's like great stuff on there, and then there's a bunch of dog shit. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I wa- <laughs> Yeah, I watched a movie on there the other night, which I was like, at the end, I was like, why? Why did I waste my Saturday night doing this? <laughs> there's Let's Plays on there too. It's, yeah, it's so weird. Um, yeah, it's very strange. <laughs> back to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, stop, stop crapping on Prime Video for now. Oh no, I can crap on Prime Video forever. Yeah, uh, you know what? I've completely forgotten if if I asked this already. But uh, I was, yeah, <laughs> like, I think it's where I was going. <laughs> then we did. Yeah. But it was like obviously the lowest sales of Xbox consoles compared to PlayStation Four uh, and even Nintendo Switch. As as a publisher, does do does, does Game Pass deals make it? Are you more inclined to port games to this uh, lower, uh, like, install-based platform because there's going to be that safety net essentially if the deal is made? Of course. You know, there's actually there's quite a big misconception about this because the yeah. thing is that a platform. To, to gamers always going on about like you know how many switches there are how many playstations there are oh but there's only this many xboxes but <laughs> the number of consoles that are out there yeah. does if anything is inversely proportional to how many units you will sell on there yeah. because if there's less consoles out there it makes a lot of developers who don't really know what they're doing then less likely to put their games on that platform, which means there's less games coming out on that platform, yeah. which means there's more eyeballs to my games. <laughs> <You're> so, <laughs> like, so you know, so so we just put nowhere profit out, and uh, we put that on on PlayStation on Xbox, and it's so well better on Xbox yeah. because because there's just so many. And, and the other the other part of it as well is that just because that many units has been sold doesn't mean that's how many active players there are. Yeah, you know, there's, like... there's so much data showing that Xbox players just buy more games. I don't know if they play them, but they definitely buy them. Yeah, well, it, well, it, you know, it doesn't help. The PlayStation Store is, is, is. I was about to say a giant bag of wank, but I'll tone that down <laughs> a little bit. Is bad. Uh, it's it's you know it's it's awful. Uh, the PlayStation yeah. Store. It's impossible to find anything in that. I, the day that Fall Fall Guys came out, I literally could not find Fall Guys on the store. I had seen... to go in my browser and I had to buy the game through the browser and then download to my PS4. I've seen like, so many people saying that the Xbox Store is is shit and the PlayStation Store is amazing. I've never been able to find a single thing on the PlayStation Store no, by typing so its wrong. name. They're so wrong. The, the problem, the big problem with the PlayStation Store is that it's entirely paid for. You know, like the entire PlayStation Store, everything you see on there uh, is all adverts. The entire PlayStation Store is adverts, and uh, and you know, and a lot of a lot of people don't realize that. Whereas on Xbox, if you ever see Descenders featured on there as like game of the uh, you know game of the week uh, in in Game Pass uh, Quest and all that kind of stuff, we we didn't pay for that. That was Xbox supporting developers. And you earned uh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, but it, it's, it's, 
games on on Xbox now sell just as well, if if not better than than PlayStation games. They just do. And so for us, the answer is no. I I I do not give a crap how many <laughs> units a console is sold. I care how many people might actually play and buy our games. That's all I care about. And the data is there. The data is there. Go Googling. You will find people talking about this. And I'm sure you have your big binder of spreadsheets. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's more like a ton of tabs. A ton of Chrome, <laughs> ton of Chrome tabs. I mean, my, I mean Microsoft Edge. Ah! Or, or Microsoft <laughs> Office. That'll make them happy. Yeah. No, no, I use, I use Google. <laughs> Google Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use any. I hate spreadsheets. They suck. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I love spreadsheets. So we're going to have to agree to disagree on this. <laughs> I, had a, I had a maths teacher in high school and she had a cup and it was like, I love spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so last question I've got for you um, is the idea of Game Pass replacing the traditional demo. Um, yes. Obviously, like demos rarely exist anymore. Like, um, you know what? I can't remember if this was a public beta, but Nowhere Profit had a beta like a year ago. Yeah. Uh, was that public or closed? Uh, it was kind of semi. You you could sign up to it, uh, uh, and then we were sending keys out to people. Yeah. And uh, we barely ever see demos anymore, apart from obviously this year, because no one can go to the expensive trade shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or yeah. Uh, or EGX. Um, but like obviously with with your you have the data that shows that people are using game pass as a trial service to test these games that they have no uh way of playing and do you think that's because demos have gone the way of the dodo uh the the problem with demos is yeah. that uh this is going to be a really boring intricate answer the problem with demos is that uh, it really depends on how they are presented yeah. on and, and what platform it is. So, for example, we do not do demos on Steam. The reason we don't do demos on Steam is because when you go on a store page, we desperately want you to be so interested in the game that you click the wish list button. Mm. If you click the wish list button... Uh, that means that in the future, we're going to be able to, to bump you and say, hey, our game's out. You remember this cool game that you liked? Yeah, check they it go, out. No. <laughs> yeah, they go, no, obviously most of them go no, but, but at least some of them will click, will click yes. Yeah. Uh, if you have a, a demo on Steam, then that wish list button gets pushed down and is now replaced with at the top a big, hey, why don't you download the demo button? Oh. And I am actually more interested in you wishlisting our game than you playing the demo. Because if you play the demo and you like it, but then you never click the wishlist button afterwards, because hmm. why would you? Uh, then I can never talk to you ever again. So that is tricky. Then you get on other platforms, like Switch, for example. It's the opposite. If somebody plays a demo of a Switch game, yeah. I then can bump them. And I then can say, hey, do you remember this cool demo you played? Well, the game's 30% <laughs> off now. And it puts them on that list for that. So the, the boring answer is, it depends on what call to action I can fire your way after you play the demo. If it's a case that you could just play the demo and I can never see you again. And I can never, you know, kind of be like, hey, how did you feel about that afterwards? Then I'm kind of not interested in that. But if someone does play a demo... And I can then, you know, sort of uh, s try to sweeten the deal for you a bit afterwards and say, hey, the game's 30% off. What do you think now? <laughs> uh, that, that is useful. Um, so that's the, that's the horrible marketing answer to that question. Well, I thought the marketing answer was pretty swell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I thought that was, that was nice and in-depth and gave a little <laughs> behind the scenes on how some of these stores work. Uh, as a... As a... A little like extension to that, like Microsoft have added wish listing on yes. Xbox. Yes. Uh, how does like that work like internally as a uh, a publisher? Is it like the uh, Steam version or the Switch version? Uh, so, so I don't know yet because I don't think they've 
fully implemented it yet. But I did tweet about this. I tweeted about this being like, this is cool, but <laughs> uh, you, you got to let us you got to let us put store pages up early yeah. so people can wishlist early. Uh, and then and then one of the Xbox team <laughs> tweeted back at me saying, like, maybe we'll do this. I'll email you. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's... Uh, the wishlist stuff on, on Steam is useful because you can put a, a store page up months before the game comes out. You know, you can put a store page up on Steam whenever you want. You can yeah. literally put a store page up and then you could... Uh, run away to the hills and, well some people uh, put up like fake store pages yes yes <laughs> and so there's definitely a downside to being able to do this yeah. uh, which is why i understand why xbox do not allow it mm. uh however uh currently you can only your, your store page on xbox can only appear uh when the game goes live yeah. uh, and that and that's tricky because obviously we kind of want to be collecting wish lists more than you know like a week before the is game it- comes out is it like when it becomes available to pre-order the... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah, you see when you get like AAA who can like put pre-orders up a million months before or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yes. Those those games will... They'll, they will have a wishlist button and they'll be allowed to wishlist many months before. I want that. Yeah. I want that. Don't just give it to AAA. Give it to Mike Rose. <laughs> he needs it. Just, he just needs Mike it. Rose. Just Mike Rose. Don't Fuck care. everyone Don't... else. Don't send it to Devolver. They don't need it. They're selling. They've made a million, a million bajillion pounds with Fall Guys and with Carrion. They don't need it, right? Don't send it to Raw Fury. They're the, they're the worst. Send it to me. Just me. Raw Fury. Yes. They... Raw Fury or Bore Fury, as I like to call them. Raw Fury. Well, they sound familiar, and I don't think I like them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really mean and horrible. Terrible publisher. Don't go near them. <laughs> Just started a bit of publisher shit there. That's good. Oh, no, they made Goner. I like that game. And no, Gandara. No, no, no. Stop saying nice things. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> God, I forgot where I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away from the triple A's. Just give it to Micros. Yes, please. Please do. <laughs> please and thank you, Microsoft. Uh, well, I guess, like, oh, the I guess the actual last thing is um, Microsoft, uh, they, they, they appear to be uh, or at least I've heard a lot of developers saying like how supportive they are like internally, whether that's through Idea Xbox or through the Xbox Game Pass team or even through their, their back compact team that are like helping developers bring their games uh, to new players without having to like fork out like like thousands for a remaster. And yeah. I, I, I was just wanting to ask like from your experience uh, has Microsoft been supported, uh, supportive of you? Like, if you've had like any issues when it comes to like, oh hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah! Out out of the three, Microsoft are, are easily the best. Yeah, on, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I you know I, I could I could literally give shout outs right now to each of the each of the individual people on the Microsoft team who have saved our asses a million times <laughs> uh, during during you know uh, during submissions on Xbox, during, whenever we've had an issue with a live game or anything. Uh, yeah, they 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 are incredibly good people. I keep I keep saying uh, to to Pip who works with me. I keep saying we need to send them bloody gift baskets. <laughs> I need to send gift baskets to every single person at Microsoft who has helped us <laughs> because they deserve it. Because we are the worst. Do you think uh, that comes from them being, um, uh, like like from starting out as like this this Western company? Like they 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 don't really have. Like as many barriers up as Nintendo or or PlayStation do, from from what I've heard. It, yeah, it definitely could be something like that. I, I think, yeah, of, of course, Nintendo and, and Sony, uh, you know, have their have their roots in in in, in an entirely different culture, and and yeah. you can feel that in a lot of different, especially with Nintendo, but but even with PlayStation, you know, like ugh, with PlayStation, I I just can never get over the fact that. When I'm when we're putting a game on PlayStation, we have to do it three times over. We have to do it what? with the US team. We have to do it with the European team, and we have to do it with the Japanese team. Like oh. it's you have to do it all separately, and none of them talk to each other. You have to <laughs> score to all set. Whereas whereas Microsoft, it's 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 just one company. <laughs> You're just dealing with 
the same people. For so you have to game. you have to individually manually send your game three different times. Yes. Instead yes. of it and like that, that's being how it's marked, always been done. Instead yeah. of it just being marked by like put up one time and then each team could just mark the same thing individually. That's yeah. That's literally how it works. It's how it works. Uh, no, that's not true. It's not entirely how it works with Nintendo. It used to be how it worked with Nintendo. Less now it does. Uh, but but yeah yeah with, with PlayStation it's arguably archaic. Yeah. Um, but but the the flip side of it is that yeah it definitely means that Microsoft's um, support system is a lot better. Yeah, definitely. Well, that is a nice note to end on. <laughs> yes, little shout out to little shout out to Wally, who uh, who is always always looking after us and stopping our games from crashing and burning on Xbox. <laughs> He'll know who he is. <laughs> He'll find himself. <laughs> He'll find himself. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for, for joining me. Uh, I am going to spend the next uh, five years transcribing all this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Apologies for talking so much. <laughs> no, that's great. It's, it's better too much than too little. <laughs> yeah, true. True. Um, yeah. But yeah, thank you uh, very much for, for joining me. Uh, thank you very much for bringing awesome games to uh, like all, all platforms, not just, uh, <laughs> just Xbox. Uh, yes. We don't just support Xbox here for people who keep saying that we do. <laughs> it sounds like you do. <laughs> Game Pass is cool and PlayStation Now sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, <It's> fair enough. <laughs> um, so I guess I will just leave it there. Is, uh, do you want to tell people where they can uh, find you? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm on the internet. Uh <laughs> I yes, I'm I'm on that big old wide internet. You can find me on Twitter. That's where I'm normally uh, ranting. Uh, my Twitter is at Rave of Ravendale. Ho- hopefully, hopefully you can work out how to spell that. If you can't, then you probably don't well, want to follow me. For the YouTube vision, we'll put up a little. We'll put up a little thing. Somebody nice. can always follow. Okay, me. <laughs> cool. Sounds good. Sounds good. And I will leave it there.